Americans. And it's time that we talk about the holiday season and this wonderful song, which, if you are familiar with, this song here is a song from, I believe the name, I will try to not destroy it, Mikola Leontovich, who was a Ukrainian composer. And the song has nothing to do with Christmas, but the English-speaking world has taken it and made it into an, into a holiday tune. Someone said it has a sinister sound to it. It belongs in one of those horror holiday movies. So yes, right. Well, if you don't think it has a sinister sound, listen to this. <laughs> That sound that you're listening to is not something, if I were to change it to the major, being the D major, we're in D minor right here, but you see the one flat. So D minor would be something of a different flavor. I mean, D major. Oh, that's really... That's frolicking through the snow. This. The, this is this is a this is drudging through a sn- a, a blizzard. So, and this, and then um so, <laughs> um, it would be more like a no, not like a dirge. So anyway. <laughs> Now let's get to another part here. It's a very simple and very repetitive tune and to play in this project, I don't I do want you to um learn both the top and the bottom part with the four variations and play in the cello. Uh so before we get any further, we need to talk about this type of D minor scale, which in your scale book if you have, you should turn to the harmonic and melodic minors. And we're going to to right into this here. This is the D minor melodic. And before we go, we should look at the melodic. Melodic is raising the sixth and seventh note one half step on the way up and then returning to natural minor on the way down. This says melodic. So, no worries. No, no, no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Okay, so if you are confused, it's in the second page, I believe, and my scale book is page 13. So let's go right into the D minor melodic. Now, important note about the D minor melodic, it changes on the way up and down. Scales usually don't change, but this one does have a different flavor to it as it ascends than descends. That's why it's super important that you know what the D minor natural is prior to knowing the D minor melodic because you got to know what to return to. And the natural minor is simply the relative major played on the sixth. So F major, sixth note of F major, one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth note is D or three notes down. From, from F, it's D, and then you play an F, uh, an F major scale, which is simply this tonality of all notes, natural, except for the, this is the, mi- this is the melodic, excuse me, the minor, D minor natural, D minor natural, and it's just uh, all the natural notes. Because if you know your F major scale, which is one flat, then this would be easy to play. Because an F major scale has a single flat. See that? Straightforward, very simple. Know your F major, to know your D minor natural, and to know your D minor melodic, you need to know how to return to the D minor natural. They are all linked. Don't be lazy. Learn your scales. So... 
remember I talked about the sixth and the seventh note. Here we are. And instead of going that, we're going to raise the sixth note and the seventh note one half step. So toward the end of it, it sounds like a D major. And maybe it will also behoove you to know what the D major is. So D major. That's a D major scale. So the last two notes of D major is in the D melodic minor. So toward the end, it sounds major, like it's transitioning between key signatures. But on the return, it's D natural minor. Everything together. Raise, 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 raise it, and then return to the natural minor. Okay, so let's move on. I'm sure you'll practice that. I'm sure that'll be wonderfully practiced. And then we're going to talk about why we are actually playing this scale. And if you look here in measures 33 and 34, you have this ascending melodic minor line right here. <laughs> So that is the melodic minor. And why? Because if you look above it, you have a descending. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> it went away for a second. If you look above it, you have a descending minor, D minor. And so D minor on the way down, natural. D minor melodic on the way up. And that is why you need to know your D minor scale. So it says 140, but to give you an example, we're going to play it simply. I'm going to give you uh, 138 seems to be the good speed to play this at. Okay. It seems to be ob obnoxiously loud at this current moment, so I'm going to take it down a little bit. So we're going to play this at 132 beats a minute, and this will be the final recording speed for those of you who want to participate. So I'm going to play it, the first part and second part. Okay, let's play the first part. To give you an idea. It's all in first position. Simply done. Now, a little bit of the bowing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, here we, second part. One, two, three. Boom. Boom.
Now this piece would not be any fun if we only did that. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to play it in four ways. The two ways that you just saw, pizzicato and article, but then we're going to play it in two other different ways. And to know what this is, I want you to pull out your scale book and go to the end here. And we're going to read a certain word and it's called con legno. It's Italian for with the wood to tap the bow's wooden stick near the bridge. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to learn how to play con legno and one other style of playing. Now, con legno is a style of playing with your bow, right? That you use the wooden part. And if my bow is made of wood, then there would be con legno with the wood. And you're going to flip it around. So my counsel is how to make this transition easy is to take your bow hand, like you see here, and flip it. You see now my fingers on the other side. I'm going to do this again. Hold the bow, flip it. This is a real style of playing. It creates a unique effect. And the best sound is going to be near the bridge. And so what you do is you're going to replace all of those notes that say pizzicato. So here, when you play con legno, you're going to replace the pizzicato. All of those pizzicato moments will be replaced with con legno. So let's look at the beginning part here, just the first part. And it's really only the first line when you're playing the first part. So take your bow, flip it on the other side. Push it back a little bit. <laughs> and. Just the first eight measures. A nice firm grip here is going to really be, uh, give you the opportunity to play well with colegno style. This is a real style of playing. It pr produces an interesting effect and it sounds really nice. It sounds like a bunch of, I don't know, sticks and bones and it just gives a totally different effect. But sometimes you do that. I suggest using the, this part of your bow right here, the, the heavier part or right here and near the bridge if you're if you're too far away you hear this percussive sound you're not getting the note you're getting the sound of the wood so it's more of a sound when it's near the bridge that's why you need to play con lengue near the bridge and so that will be the first part the second part's a little more um, interesting because you play golegno for not only the first line here but also the second line as well so you're gonna have to do these string crosses right here uh, golegno style and so first these are going to be interesting that we're looking at those low D's and to play that golegno style you're really gonna have to hold your first finger here And this is a great opportunity. If you, I want you to look right here as I'm muting. I'm doing a little mute. And be very aware of how, because it can be heavy. This is, so right here, I find to be most optimal for the low string. So I'm pushing down and lifting to create the rest. If I don't do that, this is what happens. And that resonates through the rest and you need to play the rest. You need to play the silence. Got it? Okay, so that's the low string. And then you do the same thing here in these measures right here as you did before. And then you have the string crossing. And I X out this last note right there. So don't play it because the transition is simply too hard. You're going to play your. And this right here, I want you to notice exactly where I'm playing. I'm playing here at the tip. I'm really holding my bow. I'm 
maybe even a little bit closer if you feel better. See, I'm hitting my cello. <laughs> so again, when you play with different styles, you need to adjust where you're playing. So closer to the tip is better for this. Okay, and that's all it is right there. And then you see a different word you've probably never seen before, and it's called ponticello. And ponticello style, this is a real style of playing, creates a new effect or a different effect. And you're going to take your bow, and if you've, you're going to create a nice airy sound, but not a tinny, screechy sound. And how you create this airy sound is to literally treat your bow like it's gliding along air. You play close to the bridge, fast and level. Very, very gentle, but it needs to be straight. If you don't go straight with your bow, this is going to happen and I'm sorry for your ears. It's going to get some screeches in there. I didn't get it good enough and I didn't want to, but you have to have a very level bow for this process in order to make this work. So for the part where it says ponticello, now we're going to go to the first part. So you see right here, it says arco with the ponticello. And here, arco ponticello, second part in measure 17. So you play ponticello style. When you play con legno, you follow up with ponticello. I will repeat, when you play con legno, you then follow up with ponticello. And when you play, when you play, boop, there we go. When you play pizzicato, you follow up with arco. Okay, so for now we're doing con legno, ponticello style. All right, so I'll demonstrate this and to give you an idea, at speed. One, two, we'll play the first part. One, two, go legno, ponticello. One, two, three, one, two, three. Nice and light, fast, fast bow. It's essential when you're playing ponticello style is to keep this bow as we're okay, going to turn this off for a second is to keep this bow fast lots of speed in the bow stroke if you slow it down you risk exciting the fundamental and the ponticello is playing the overtones it's not playing the fundamental if you slow it down the bow will grip and you're going to play ponticello you're going to play the fundamental Essentially, what we're doing with Ponticello is we are literally sliding. And if you're familiar with this sport in driving called drifting, where they take the car and the car looks like it's sliding around the whole time. And if you never, you don't know what I'm talking about, look at what drifting cars are online. And you'll, it's a type of racing where the car is supposed to have style, and, but it's sliding all the time. Tires are supposed to grip the road. So this, they spin the tires fast enough to get it to a point where it slides. It's the exact same concept. This is supposed to grip your string, but we're going so fast and we're going in a manner that we're making it slide and not grip. So fast and close to the bridge is going to give you that ponticello style. 
And then I'll play this last section here, which will be the second part, and which is a little more difficult. Gold legno ponticello style. Here we go. With the metronome. One, two, three. Again, I'm going to take this bow, flip it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Mute, mute, mute. Tip your bow. Change the bow. It's much more difficult to play ponticello style on an open string, as you see right here, especially on these strings right here. You have that open D. And if you play just a little bit slower, you're going to excite the fundamentals. So you really have to move your bow quickly. So be aware of those parts right there. And yes, these styles may sound very different to your ear or maybe um, even slightly unpleasant if you're not used to that sound, especially if you're new to making the ponticello sound. But as an ensemble, it sounds very cool. It gives it an ethereal, effrayant effect. Effrayant means spooky in French. And that's exactly what it's supposed to feel like. And this song isn't necessarily a... Happy song, again, is more sinister as we're trying to make it sound. So the last thing is that when you p select your part in this, there's two parts. You play both parts. So you play one all the way through, and you play the, one, the other one all the way through. So when you select, let's say, if you want to do the first part, if you're going to do colegno, you must follow up ponticello. And then you do the second part, and the second part, then you can do pizzicato arco, okay? So they go hand in hand. Con legno links with ponticello style. And then when you do pizzicato, pizzicato links with arco style. It's that simple. Or you can simply submit all four, um, all, all four styles playing all, all the parts, top and bottom. Keep it simple like that. Please submit by the first week of December so we can have this on the channel. Everyone is invited. That's it. <laughs>